We're going to be talking about buoyancy and drag in fluids. So what happens with buoyancy? Uh, what is the equation for it? We're going to be learning about Archimedes' principle, Stokes' uh, law. We're basically going to talk about what happens with fluid dynamics. Now, what do we mean, first of all, by fluids? I think that's a key thing. Do we mean liquids? Yeah, sure. So water, liquids. But actually, it turns out air is considered a fluid because gases. So, so that's really going to be important. Something moving through the air is still going to follow these principles here. Now let's talk about something though that is in a liquid. So something that we call buoyancy. To be buoyant means something floats. You know, that's the key word here. So buoyancy is all about floating. And I actually asked my daughter this morning, I said, you know, why do things float? And she said, I think, okay, mind, she's uh, eight. So she said, oh, it's because things are lighter, they float, and things that are heavier sink. And that would make sense, right? If you had like a, I don't know, well, here, I have a glass of water right here. So for example, if I put something heavy in it, of course, it'll sink. And of course, uh, if I put something light in it, it'll float. That's what she thought. And she's not totally wrong to think that. I mean, that's what her world has experienced. But then I did ask a question because I'm kind of a jerk. I said, all right, how does a boat float? A boat's super heavy. She's like, no, 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 they make the boat really light. I was like, no, but no, a boat can be really heavy. So for example, like in this picture right here, it's supposed to be this largest cruise ship ever made. So this one, for example, uh, yeah, how can it float? It can't th be that it's light because light things, you know, should float. Well, maybe, but it can't exactly be this with a boat. A boat's not light. It's super heavy. So how is it? Well, this is why we have Archimedes principle. So this right here helps us to understand a little bit about why things actually float. Okay, so this is the key thing right here is this. The upwards buoyancy force. This is really, really important here. Okay, so upwards buoyancy force. So the force that's upwards on an object. Uh, it depends. It doesn't matter if it's completely or partially submerged in a fluid. So uh, it's equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. So what do I mean displaced? I mean when I put something in water, I have to move water out of the way. And if I've moved water out of the way, we consider those two weights. If those two weights are equal, then, you know, or at least, how's this? Whatever that force is of the displaced fluid, that will be the force forcing it upwards. And hopefully it's enough to satisfy, uh, you know, Fg, or gravity, going downwards. So this is sort of how it's going to work. Now, a really, really dumb way to explain this, but I think it works. And this is actually something that my high school teacher showed us. I'm going to, I clean my hands at least, so this is good. I've got a glass of water here. And remember, if you put something in it, water will be displaced. So can you see this right here? I hope you can. Look at the level of water. Now, I'm going to put my hand, it's a fairly narrow glass here, but I'm going to put my hand in the water, and I think you know what's going to happen, right? As I put my hand in it, do you notice the water level goes up? Do you notice? And as I remove it, it goes down. Well, that's because I've displaced some water. And the amount of water that I've displaced, or the at least the force that's acting on that fluid, that's going to be this buoyancy. So it's all about displacing water. So for example here, if you have a ball and this weird shape right here, this hull that's shaped like this, let's assume it's made of the same material, the same amount of material. Well, the ball, because it's fairly... I mean, it's spherical. So because of the ball's shape, it will displace some water when you put it in, sure. But if you put this shaped hull like this here into water, it will also displace water. In fact, it'll displace more. In fact, if it has enough weight of displaced water, it can be enough to make it float. So this buoyancy is all about this. It's about displaced fluid. So the upwards buoyancy force, then, I mean, it's also due to the pressure difference, uh, so between the top and the bottom. And actually what's interesting is the height of an object above the surface, it depends on this ratio of the density of the object over the density of the fluid. And we have something that we say if the densities are equal, we call it neutral buoyancy. But really the key thing I want you to focus on is this one right here, Archimedes principle. All right. Oh, by the way, um, my brother sent me this. It's kind of related to water, at least. So there's a joke. I can't remember exactly how it went, but it's something like, uh, oh, I went for an interview, and at my interview, uh, you know, for a job, I poured some water into a glass so high that it actually overflowed. And the interviewer said, are you nervous? And I said, nope. I just want to show you I always give 110%. <laughs> it's cute. So all right, let's keep going. So let's figure out what is uh, what is this equation. We've got an equation right here for buoyancy, and it's uh, related here. So it's going to be relating to this uh, weight of the fluid displaced. And that means it must be something to do with the shape as well. So we're going to talk about that as well.
So here we go. Um, I like this one here. You can tell the gender of an ant by throwing it in the water. No, I'm not a psycho. We're not going to do this for real. But I like this. If it sinks, it's a girl ant. If it floats, it's a boy ant. Get it? Ah, it's cute. So let's actually write this down. So we have an equation right here that relates the upwards buoyancy force and relating to these. Okay, and thankfully, it's nice and straightforward. It's just FB um, and it just equals rho, this is the density of the fluid, times capital V, which is the volume of the fluid displaced, times G, the acceleration due to gravity. So this right here is all we need. This is basically the equation form of Archimedes' principle. There we go. So let's talk about this right here. What is the buoyancy force? What's that measured in? It's measured in newtons. Okay, what's a density? Density is measured in kilograms per meters cubed. Sorry, I like that. Now V is the volume of the fluid displaced. So what would that be? A volume is just in meters cubed. And G is 9.81. That's the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, of course, and it's in meters per second squared. So there we go. This is essentially the equation we're going to need here. Let's keep going. So this one right here, uh, we're going to talk about Stokes' Law and viscous drag force. So this is something as well, So like, it's, uh, like we talked about before, we've got buoyancy, this is this upwards force, and this is this buoyancy force. That's what we call F with subscript B for buoyancy. All right, so that is essentially uh, the buoyancy equation. Now we've got something else for drag, because if something goes through a fluid, there is a drag force, there's a resistive force. And that drag force, it's relating actually, we have to do with it uh, in liquids, but also in air. So we call this one Stokes' Law. So just like before when we had Archimedes' principle, now we've got this one here called Stokes' Law. And it basically says this right here, that an object, well, it experiences a drag force, so some object, we're gonna assume it's a sphere here, at least that's the way this equation is formed. It passes through some kind of fluid, remember that could be water, it could be you know maple syrup or whatever, but it's also air. And it experiences some drag force which is opposing the motion. So for example, if this thing here is moving downwards, uh, let's assume then it actually moves downwards. Okay, so let's say it actually moves this way. Well then there's gonna be some forces acting on it, right? There's gonna be Fg, which is equal to mg, this you know gravitational force going down, sure, but there's also gonna be a drag force, and it's always acting opposite to the motion. So if this thing actually moves downwards, then the drag force is gonna be up. But if it's moving upwards, then the drag force is gonna be down. This is the same thing that happens if you are skydiving, for example. You jump out of an airplane, well then you're going to feel a downwards force, sure, but there's gonna be air resistance, this is this upwards drag force. And this is actually this one right here. We're gonna have an equation for it. Okay, so Stokes' law has an equation. So the equation goes like this. It says the drag force okay, is equal to six times pi times this Greek symbol right here, which is eta. Okay, so it's six times pi times eta times r times v. So this is gonna be this equation here. This is the Stokes' law equation. So first of all, let's discuss what is what. Fd is the drag force that's in Newton's. So again, that's this that's this force that opposes the motion. R is the radius of a sphere, so that must be in meters. V is the speed of the sphere, so that must be in meters per second. Like this. And then we have this viscosity of the fluid, this Greek symbol eta. It looks like a weird curly N. If you're Greek, it's just a lowercase. Uh, well, the uppercase, I think, looks like an H to me at least. So like H, and this is this lowercase. This is just what we call the viscosity of the fluid. Let's first talk, well, we'll talk about it in a second, but let's uh, look at the units. It's actually in Pascal. Seconds is a very common unit. There's a few other units you can use, but I think this is the most common one. So I want to just show you these here. So what's happening first of all, what's viscosity? Viscosity is a resistance to flow. So if something uh, has a low viscosity, then it flows easily, like water or whatever. If it has a high viscosity, it's something that resists flow well. So something like you know maple syrup or engine oil or technically glass is considered a fluid. So actually glass has a very, very high viscosity because it doesn't flow very well. It flows extremely slowly. But it turns out with glass, if you wait a long time, glass does, like if you look at like old, old um, cathedrals, for example, in Europe, the stained glass that they put in churches, like you know, hundreds of years ago, the glass on the bottom is much thicker than the glass on the top because it extremely slowly flows. So this is all about flowing. 
Now I'm Canadian, that's why I put the maple syrup on, not just for me. But there we go. So pro tip, it helps to know what the volume of a sphere is. And you don't have to memorize it, it's on your formula booklet, but I think it's a nice thing to uh, be able to find. But the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So in case you need it, that's nice to know. Okay, so that's another pro tip. Volume of a sphere, in case you need it, there it is. All right. Let's keep going then. So what about if we have a particle that drops in a fluid? So let's say we do drop something. Um, it could be any particle. Here's our sphere here, and it moves downwards. Now let's assume it's in some actual, you know, there's some actual fluid it's dropping through here. Well, that means then there's going to be some forces acting on it. There's going to be, for example, the downwards force, and maybe I'll draw them in blue here. There's going to be a downwards force. Maybe I'll draw it that long, and I'll say that's Fg. That equals mg. All right, so that that's good news. Maybe I'll just write it down like this. So it has fg, which is equal to mg, which is, in this case right here, acting downwards. What else acts on it? Well, remember what we learned about is we've got this very beginning here. We've got this buoyancy force, this buoyancy equation, fb equals rho vg. That must also be acting on it. So fb, the buoyancy force, must be rho times v times g. Now, this must be acting upwards, because buoyancy is going to act upwards in this case, so the way I've drawn it, so that'll be up. So let's assume it's something like this, maybe, I don't know, something like that. That'll be FB. But keep in mind, we're also going to have an upwards force. Upward, only because it's moving downwards, we have a drag force as well, don't we? FD, this drag force, this Stokes Law equation we just learned. So we've got the drag force, which is going to be, remember, 6 pi times eta times r times v. Is that how it goes? 6 pi eta r v. Yep. There we go. And that one is also acting upwards. So it may be a matter of equating these forces. For example, like if something is falling at a constant speed, then you know the two upwards forces have to add up to the downwards force. If it's you know accelerating downwards, okay, well then you can you know figure that out. So it's all about these forces. I just wanted to sort of draw you what could happen here. Now, it could be different. What if it's going up? What if it's going left or right? Whatever. But I'm just trying to show you an example. So there are different forces acting on this sphere. It's important to account for them depending on the situation.